Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be talking about nesting case statements. Now I have some data here that I've thrown together and if you would like to follow along with this tutorial this data is available in the description down below for you to copy and paste into your database. So let's get right into it. We're going to look at how we can nest case statements. Now, nested case statements are not always the best solution and probably not always the read most readable. However, there are times where they are applicable perhaps for ad hoc queries that we need to get out of the door quite quickly. Now, I'm just going to show this and this is a matrix I've been given. And it simply shows based on the customer type, the number of orders a customer has made and the total amount of those orders, how much discount is applicable to that customer. Uh, and we need to look at implementing that within, uh, within our query. Um, and for this, we're going to be using nested case statements. So if we head back over to SQL Server Management Studio and we'll dive right in. Okay, so I've got a simple query here, and as we can see, I am joining to a derived table. If you're not familiar with how to join to derived tables, I have recently uploaded a video on my channel, and there'll be a link to that in the top right-hand corner of this video, should you wish to go and watch that first. Um, so within this orders table, we are just pulling back by customer key, uh, a count of the number of orders and a sum on the order amount to give a total. So all I'm simply doing is taking the customers table and joining it to the results of that derived table. And now we're going to start building our case statement. So as we can see we've got a customer type here P or B representing person or business and that is where we need to start within the matrix. So I'm going to start off with a simple case statement to say case when customer type equals P. Then we're going to apply a, another case statement. So when customer type equals P is true, another layer of a case statement is going to be applied. And this is going to be based on the number of orders. So case when number of orders is greater than or equal to three then and again we're building another layer of case statements here so once that's true then we'll apply another layer of a case statement to say then when case when total amount is greater than or equal to 20,000 then 20% and if we just jump back to the matrix, we can see we've applied that here. So customer type of P, number of orders greater than three, total amount 20,000, we offer a discount of 20%. Now, if their number of orders is greater than three, but their total amount doesn't meet that, then we will offer a discount of 15% probably not accurate considering if they've placed two greater than 10,000 they get 18% but this is just to give an idea. I've seen sillier things in the business world of how discounts are applied. So yes if they haven't if they've got more than three orders haven't spent more than 20% then it's 15% so we'll add that to our else so we'll say else 15 and end we will close off that case statement there then we need to move on to handle when number of orders is greater than two so I'm just going to use some indentation here to make this a bit clearer I'll hide the results grid for now so then we want another when here to say when number of orders greater than or equal to two then and then we have another case statement to say when the total amount is greater than or equal to 10,000, then 18, else 12, end. 
and looking back at the matrix that will cover off this second scenario and then what we need to do is close down that case statement here to say else five end so we're closing this second level of case statement and then we're going to close well we're not going to close the outer level because we also need to apply other discounts when the customer type is a business so again I'm just going to indent this so it makes for easier reading and you can see the complexity that soon becomes apparent when we are looking to nest case statements uh, sometimes it can be sort of an easier solution sometimes it's just a case of we we get carried away we need to get things done uh, and then for that we can simply pretty much copy the logic that we've already applied so number of orders three apply another case statement to say when total amount is greater than or equal to 30,000 for businesses then so 25 15 25 else 15 and when number of orders greater than or equal to 2 then total amount greater than or equal to 20,000 then 19 else 13 now I'll just double check what the remainder is 6% so that will again be else 6 end and then we close off the outstanding case statement give it an alias as discount with a lowercase c and if we have a look at that now so we've got uh, outer cases looking at customer type so when customer type is p we then have uh, next level which is looking at the number of orders uh, and then based on the number of orders we have another case statement looking at the total amounts so if we execute that query we can see here the different discount amounts have been applied to each customer based on their type the number of orders and the total they have spent with us now i'm sure we can come up with a more readable solution than that so if you can let me know how you would do that in the comments below like I say, this is useful to have within your armory of SQL queries, understanding that case statements can be nested because often we have to build layers of conditional logic. Hope you have enjoyed that video. If you're looking for more content on data engineering or data analysis, subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.